Following their promotion from the Evo Stick Premier Division last season, South Shields are currently taking part in the National League North for the first time ever. They've had a pretty good season so far and are currently sat just inside the playoff places at the time of recording. Today, we are going to try and replicate that form and see where we can take them over the course of 10 full seasons in Football Manager. So grab yourselves a drink, guys, because this is going to be a long one. Drop a like on the video if you do enjoy the 10 season rebuilds, a longer one. If you do enjoy it, drop a like on it down below. And if you are new around here or you're a South Shields fan picking up the channel for the very first time, do consider hitting that subscribe button. And let's jump into the game, shall we? Let's go and have a look at South Shields. So, guys, here we are. Now, I do have to give you a little bit of a disclaimer. This save isn't actually done by me. This save has been done by my mod, my longtime friend in this community, Balen. Uh, this is his save that he was doing on FM this year and he's been gracious enough to send me the save files for it so we can go through in a traditional rebuild format for you guys to enjoy today because I can already tell you it's one hell of a journey. This club has actually been on a very meteoric rise and they're in a very good shape to be perfectly honest with you. Um, as you can see they've got eights over here in their facilities already for training facilities, youth facilities, academy coaching as well and they have a 5-4 basic youth recruitment. These facilities if you don't know obviously you can see this via the Tato skin. I'll leave a link to that down in the description as well. But you can see these ratings, much like the attributes on players, guys. These range from one all the way up to 20. So that is how they run. And you can see they're already in pretty good shape if you compare it to some of the other teams at the level. I also do have to say they are a professional team, which you don't often see in England's sixth tier. Obviously, Scunthorpe are, but then there's a whole host of other clubs at this level that are semi pro. So we are already in a very good shape. Um, one thing I will also say is if we go on to their overview, you can see the club has been fantastically on the rise regardless of me or Balen rather being in charge of this team. Now we want to take it to the next level. We want to see where we can take them over the course of 10 seasons. If we have a look at the squad already, uh, you can see there's actually good players for this level already. Miles Boney is very, very good. 12 reflexes, 12 one-on-ones for this level. Again, the sixth tier of English football. I think it's very, very good. Um, what I am actually going to do is super quickly change that to attribute analysis. There you go, because I know you guys like to see that. But the team is looking pretty good. Also, I have to give a shout out to Tom Broadbent as one of them. And then uh, Luke James, uh, both guys that I worked with at Bristol Rovers when I worked there. Um, fantastic blokes both of them actually genuinely really really nice guys so hopefully they get on pretty well in this save with regards to the tactic obviously Balen started this one really early doors in the game so he's using the original swans alona for this entire video or entire save for 10 years the og so it's going to be interesting to see how this transitions as we get on but this is the 4-2-3-1 uh, and it looks very good the players obviously uh woodsy here are uh, uh, not really vibing him in terms of uh having a very good understanding of being a roaming playmaker it's kind of niche but we will see what happens with it I, I back him to have a good season regardless if we go and take a look at the competitions guys we have three on our plate this season we have the Vanarama National League North we have the FA Trophy and of course we have the FA Cup we are going to have to qualify for that one but we're going to have to see also I've got to ask you this the news broke yesterday at the time of me recording this about FA the FA Cup scrapping uh, replays in the FA Cup after the first round. Let me know in the comments what you actually think of that because I think it's awful for football. But we move, we move, we move. That's their decision. If we go into the Vanarama National League North and take a look at the season preview, the board wants us to at least get into the playoff positions. We are predicted to finish in seventh, which actually is where Shields are in real life at the time of recording. Things may have changed over the weekend, but that's where they were. Um, I'm recording this on a Friday. Uh, so that's where we're predicted to get. I want to do better, as always. And hopefully with the power of a GYR tactic, we can achieve some success this season. Let's get to simulating, and I'll be back with a Season 1 recap. Our main goal this season was to adapt to the league as quickly as we could and hopefully at least equal what Shields are doing in real life, if not better it. And we started the season remarkably well, winning our first 10 games whilst going unbeaten 
for 15 matches until we face Brackley Town at the end of October. Paul Blackett absolutely dominated the division this season, bagging 33 goals in 38 appearances in the league and was ever present in this side. I also have to give a shout out to Blair Adams in the left back spot who managed to provide a total of 20 assists along with 5 goals in his 58 appearances in all competitions this season. We had a minor wobble over Christmas losing two home fixtures in a row before getting the season back on track in style with some impressive wins. Then after losing at home to expected champion Scunthorpe in the middle of February, we went on an another a 13 game unbeaten run to close out the season. These long spells of dominance saw a skyrocket to the top of the league and saw secure the Vanarama National League North title at the first time of asking, beating Chester to the title by 12 points. With morale high, we were able to progress successfully in the FA Trophy whilst also dominating in the league. We advanced through the early rounds without really breaking a sweat until facing Worthing in the quarterfinals. Dylan Motley Henry gave us the lead on the half hour mark, but Worthing were able to pull level with Danny Cashman scoring their goal. And given there is no extra time in this competition, this would be settled via penalty shootout as we managed to score all five of ours whilst our goalkeeper pulled off two huge saves to see us move into the semi finals. In the semis, we were drawn alongside National League side Yeovil Town, and the game would be played on the road at Hewish Park. This was another tense one, but in the second half, former Bristol Rovers man Luke James found the breakthrough for us, cutting in from the left-hand side before curling a nice effort beyond the keeper to book our place in the final. The final took place at Wembley where we took on another National League side in Gateshead and we got off to a terrible start in this one. Billy Chadwick gave Gateshead the lead in the first half with a nice finish inside the penalty area, but our top goal scorer Paul Blackett was able to equalise, applying the finish to a nice delivery from the right-hand side. With 20 minutes of the game to go, Chadwick scored his second goal of the game, but yet again Blackett was on hand to pull us level for a second time just 15 minutes later. Then in the dying seconds of injury time, it happened. We took the lead for the first time in the game as Blackett completed a hat-trick with the best goal of the bunch, lashing home from the edge of the penalty area. We also had a fantastic run in the FA Cup, which really added some much needed funds to the club's coffers. Our path in the FA Cup proper was straightforward before defeating Doncaster and Altrincham before losing 3-1 to West Brom at the Hawthorns in the third round. I don't think we could have done much better this season if I actually wrote the script for it myself, but we now have to make the step up to the National League. Finances are tight at this level, but our wage budget has increased by around £7,000 a week, which really should help bringing some of the best free agents possible. So guys, transfer update for season number two, and we've actually kept a core of the squad together and just tried to add a couple of different players in. Obviously, I've highlighted some of the ones that have come in on the bottom half of the screen. Obviously, we picked up a couple towards the end of last season in Keandra Simons. He looks very good for this level. Uh, looks like he can be a little bit of a terror with his 12 pace and 11 acceleration and stuff like that. We've also got this guy, Kalen Beattie, a former Sunderland man. He comes in as a fullback option for us on that left-hand side. Looks pretty good. He is six foot two though, so maybe he can also play centre half if required. We signed this guy, Patrick Jarrett, from uh, Queen's Park in Scotland. Again, looks like a very good option for the central attacking midfield position in this one. 12 dribbling, 10 finishing, 10 first touch. Honestly, guys, at National League level, if we got double digits in any of these attributes, I am sweet with it. Uh, Kian Ronan comes in as a right-back option for us. He's also got 11 crossing along with 11 passing and 12 tackling again. Looking like a very good player for us at this level. Oli Kensdale comes in on a free transfer. He, again, looks pretty good in most of these attributes that you're kind of looking for in these key areas. He will bolster us at the back. We did sign Jack Kingdon as centre-back from Manchester United. Yes, he looks pretty darn good for me. Uh, the positioning is good on him. I like his positioning. I like his bravery. It's exactly what you need for a centre-half. Yes, he's young at 18 years of age, but he's got good physicals, good mentals for a player that age already. And he's capped it under 19 level for Scotland as well. So that's going to be a very interesting one. And then on the last page, we've got this guy, Callum Sullivan, coming in from Birmingham as well. A nice utility option. The fact that he can play both fullback positions is key for me. Yes, okay, he doesn't really have a left foot, but I'm open to him being a backup in both of these spots. We've had a couple of players leave for uh, freeze for the most part. Um, so I'm not going to touch on them too, too much because they don't change the world. If we quick pick without restriction our best 11, this is how we are set up for the season. 
season. Again, that roaming playmaker continues to be a slight problem for us, but Kingdon comes in here, which is great to see. BT in as well, which is brilliant. Um, but the team we're looking at keeping together, uh, Blackett, after having a fantastic season for us last year, uh, we're going to have to see how he makes that step up. If we have a look, you can see 33 in 38 in the National League North. Can he do it at the National League level? He's played at that level before for Gateshead, so let's hope he can make that step up, as obviously his goals were vital to us last season. We do have three competitions again. It's much the same FA Trophy and FA Cup at this level. And of course, we have the National League. Now, the board are expecting us to fight bravely against relegation here, but I actually kind of fancy our chances. The morale's high. We've kept the core of the team together. It's just some interesting teams that have been relegated. Obviously, Barrow and Crawley Town come down to this level. We also have York City, Barnet, Gateshead, Oldham, Hartlepool. There's some good teams at this level. Um, and obviously, we don't necessarily have that advantage of being professional versus everybody else now because there are more pro teams at this level. Uh, Yeovil Town, another one who have come up as well that will be professional. So it's going to be interesting to see how we get on in season number two. Can we make it into the Football League for the first time in this club's history? For me, season number two was a carbon copy of season number one, just at a slightly higher level. We started the National League season with three wins on the trot before losing at home against Crawley. After that, we put together an outstanding run for a newly promoted side, roaring up the table whilst not dropping all three points. Before the window closed, we made some impressive signings, bringing in former Manchester City forward Tai Soji on a free transfer, and we did spend 4k on defender Roshan Williams from Notts County. Those additions saw us perform remarkably in the league, with Tai Soji being at the heart of all things, scoring 27 goals in all competitions, and he is now wanted by Bristol Rovers. I also have to give a massive shout out to James Berry, who dominated on our left flank, providing 26 goals, along with 20 assists in his 50 appearance in all competitions and for me he was my player of the season morale was through the roof at the club and we continued to dominate in the league in surprising fashion actually extending that unbeaten run to 42 league matches on our way to winning the national league title by 11 points we only lost that one fixture this season without anyone actually getting close to the golden boot but we did dominate the highest average rating page with six players inside the top 10 in the division so we will be playing in the football league next season for the first time but could we defend our FA trophy because this will be the last time that we will hopefully play in this competition well after overcoming Bishop Stortford via penalties in the third round things were much more comprehensive as we blasted our way through to a second successive final this season we take on York City at Wembley and we were caught cold in this one by York who raced into a two goal lead inside the first 25 minutes of the match once we went two goals down we then realized that we were the best team in the National League and and kicked into gear with James Berry adding a goal for us just before half time. Then in the second half, actually against the run of play, we pulled level as Kian Ronan received the ball on the edge of the area and unleashed a thunderbolt that beat the keeper at his near post. And with 20 minutes of the game to go, Patrick Jarrett hammered home a strike from inside the penalty area to see us retain the FA Trophy. Much the same as last season, we had a favourable run into the FA Cup, beating Alfredton Town at home before defeating both both Torquay United and Gateshead to get into the third round for a second season in a row. This time, we got the big payday that we were looking for as we took on Arsenal at the Emirates. This game went exactly as you would think it would with us suffering a 5-0 defeat to the Premier League side, but the payday was definitely worth it. So another two trophies have been added to the trophy cabinet as we say goodbye to non-league football as we will be playing in Skybet League 2 next season. We have a small amount of transfer budget, but the wage budget has received another cash injection, but our club balance looks amazingly healthy to make the step up. So then guys, we had some big, big transfer business going down in between season two and season number three. We've actually sold some players for some money. Yes, Keandra Simmons has gone to Wrexham for 300 
thousand pounds yes i can't believe it at this level either he's gone i thought soji would leave he hasn't simmons has gone to Wrexham for 300k and we also sold jack kingdom to qpr for 70k but they were gracious enough to let him come back on loan for the season we've also made a couple of other additions to this team um obviously we've touched on a couple of them uh these are the players that have kind of come in this time around uh mary looks relatively decent again for the level we're looking more like a squad player for us to be all honest uh, Luke Robinson comes in as a fullback option for us in that left back area. 16 determination. Sees he could do relatively well at the level. We've signed Teddy Sharman low. He looks like a very good goalkeeper actually for us. 15 aerial reach along with the 15 kicking. Solid one-on-ones handling and reflexes. I like good positioning on my goalkeepers as well. So he will make a step up for us at 6 foot 4. Looks like an absolute beast. We signed Harrison Parker as well from the former Manchester City man. Again, 6 foot 1 for a centre half. Cap to England under 18 level he is still 18 so he's also got 14 pace 13 jumping reach and 13 acceleration i think he also has five star potential yes he does for this level so i think he could be a very good addition for us on the second page obviously we touch on jack kingdom coming back on loan from QPR. Akinola's come in as another option for us. You need to have these squad depth options if you're trying to play at a high level all the time. We also signed Roshan uh, Matherin is how I'm probably going to butcher this name. So I'm sorry, Roshan. He looks great. Can play on both sides if needed. Can play in the cam spot if needed. Good dribbling for the level. Good pace. Good physicals. I think in the National League, if you have good physicals, I think you're going to be all right. I know we're making the step up, but I think that transition into the Football League can also work at League 2 level because for me, I don't see a huge difference between league two and non-league but there we go and we also signed Tariq as well who looks like a, a a great little winger option can play all the way up that left hand side and could be dangerous as well with 12 uh, acceleration and his 13 pace he has also has 13 flair as well so if we go into the team and quick pick without restriction our best 11 going into the season this is how we're looking we've also got Tahi Soji actually starting for us this year obviously the former Man City player he looks very good you don't see a lot of 16s in Skybet League to let me tell you high aggression as well which is going to work for him really nicely he's very good as a pressing forward obviously we're playing him as an advanced forward he had a good time with us last year and now it's time for him to make the step up into skybet league two obviously coming off of good grinding being at man city from a youth level but i think this team is relatively good we're a little bit ropey at defense obviously getting kingdom back in on loan is a massive signing a massive addition for us but i still like the soji berry uh, kind of combo on this side i think it can still do the business for us competitions wise though we lose the fa trophy we can no longer participate in that one but we have gained the efl trophy and the carabao cup to go along with the fa cup in terms of domestic cup competition so we've got three on the schedule which is why you need a big big squad in skybet league two though we are predicted or the board wants us to avoid relegation but we're in a very competitive league if we go and take a look at the season preview we're not actually the worst team in the league we are predicted to finish in 18th um but obviously crawley who were promoted with us uh predicted to finish in seventh so i think you can kind of see that at 33 to 1 predicted in 18th kind of anyone can beat anyone at this point so you never know how good a season we're actually going to have but there's some interesting teams in here Morecambe in here Leighton Orient are here uh, Gillingham also got relegated so did Stevenage this is the easiest in my mind one of the easiest divisions to get out of because there's three automatic promotion spots and then four go into the playoffs so I'd like to think we could be there or thereabouts inside that top three come the end of this season We adapted to Football League life very well, winning four of our first five league fixtures of the season. Then as we moved into October, things really took off with us winning five games in a row whilst handing out some beatings to the likes of Cheltenham Town and Northampton. The most refreshing bit for me was how the players made the step up this season. We had joint top goal scorers this year as Ty Soji and James Berry both scored 24 goals, whilst midfielder Patrick Jarrett provided a huge 23 assists throughout the season in all competitions. In January, we made our first large player purchase as we signed fullback Michael Rosiak from Barnet for £140,000 and the former Arsenal man went on to make 21 appearances for us in all competitions. With Rosiak's addition, we really did go from strength to strength and we were really impressive in the second half of the season. Look at all that green on our fixture list. 
it seems like the step up from National League to the Football League wasn't as big as I was kind of expecting as we continued our rise up the leagues, winning the League 2 title by 10 points. Much like last season, we didn't top any goal scoring charts, but we had six of the top 10 players performing in the league on average rating. So I guess this tactic can still do the business. This season also saw us make our EFL trophy debut and we were drawn in Group A alongside Grimsby, Shrewsbury and Everton's under 21s. We'd rip through the opposition here winning all of our games and topping that group. And the momentum continued in the knockout stages as we defeated Newcastle's under 21s, Man City's under 21s to set up a quarterfinal tie with Shrewsbury. We'd already beaten the Shrews in the group stage but this time we were on the road for the fixture. And as expected the game wasn't as cut and dry as Shrewsbury took the lead early through Junior Dixon. We then began to assert ourselves on the game with Patrick Jarrett pulling us level before taking the lead from the penalty spot in the second half. But Shrewsbury weren't to be denied in this one as they managed to equalise in the 82nd minute after a long range strike came crashing back off the post. However, with three minutes of the 90 remaining, we regained the lead through Paul Blackett getting on the end of a Dylan Motley Henry cross to send us into the semi-finals. This is where we took on League One side Peterborough with the tie taking place at the first Klein Arena in South Shields. Ty Soji opened the scoring, applying the finish to a low cross into the penalty area, but with two minutes of the game remaining, the League One side finally found the breakthrough to make the game all square. As there's no extra time in this competition, things went straight to a penalty shootout where our goalkeeper Teddy Sharman Lowe was able to save two penalties to see us move into the final. Here we will take on Manchester United under 21s, and I'm very intrigued to see what you guys think about having under 21 teams in this competition. For me, it kind of ruins it. I'd love to know what you guys think. I guess in this instance, it was our experience within the team that helped us in this one as we managed to score two goals without reply in the first half to take charge of this fixture. United's kids did add a goal of their own late on through Dan Hall, but we managed to hold on to the lead and secure a league and cup double. In the other domestic cuts, we made positive progress in each before ultimately losing to Premier League opposition. But considering these aren't competitions that I stand any chance of winning right now, I will just take the massive payday from playing Spurs away in the FA Cup. You can clearly see that momentum is still with us right now as we've recorded yet another remarkable season and we will be playing football in League One next year. Moving into the summer transfer window, we have a minimal transfer budget yet again, but our wage budget continues to increase to be able to attract those free agents. Season 4 saw a huge transition of players as 7 new faces came through the door all on free transfers. The best addition to the squad was Tony Green who signed on a free transfer from Liverpool who I think we can all agree looks amazing. And just behind him was the loan signing of former Manchester City fullback Ezra Carrington who shows great athleticism for this level. This is always going to be an interesting season for us because I find it very tough to keep that morale high and that momentum going whilst you're changing players in and out the squad who haven't necessarily had that success. But I guess when contracts come to an end, you really do have to be ruthless between players that you have a heart and a passion for and the players who can really drive you on in these types of saves. We were expected to be near the bottom of the league table this season, but we are not the worst side in the division by any stretch. So let's see how we get on. Before we get into the results of season number four, I actually have some massive transfer news to update you guys about. In the January transfer window, we sold two players for a total of one and a half million pounds, which for a team in League One is absolutely massive. First goalkeeper Teddy Sharman Lowe left the club to join now championship side Luton Town for £500,000 and then we sold new gem Peter Davies to Stoke City for a million pounds. We were able to get Davies back on loan for the remainder of the season but that million quid transfer fee is honestly huge at this level. The money enabled us to pull in some additional free agents in the January transfer window as we added Luca Plogman to be our new man in between the sticks. We also picked up former Everton attacking midfielder Charlie Whittaker, former Liverpool fullback Owen Beck and former Southampton man Will Smallbone. These additions really helped us in the season which you will see when you look at our schedule. 
We started the season with three defeats in our first four matches with some really rough fixtures coming out of the gate. But after the first month was over, we settled down into a rhythm and started to pick up victories against the likes of Wrexham and Wigan. Ty Soji continued to progress with us up the divisions as he was our top goal scorer yet again, netting 24 goals in 49 appearances in all competitions, but his rise with us from the National League does need to be commended. It will also come as no surprise that Tony Green had a fantastic season with us racking up 14 goals along with 20 assists and the former Liverpool new gen is now wanted by Stoke. Throughout December we went unbeaten only failing to pick up all three points on one occasion and we carried that form into the rest of the season. It was a highly competitive league one this season but we came out on top of the pile for yet another season in a row continuing this meteoric rise up the football league. So we move into the championship, but we could not replicate that form in the cup competitions this season. We suffered defeat in the first round of the EFL Cup away at Ipswich, and we failed to get out of our group in the EFL Trophy, having been drawn alongside Tranmere, Burton Albion, and Leicester's under-21s. The FA Cup was a slightly different story as we actually advanced all the way through to the fifth round, having won three games away from home before suffering defeat at the hands of Southampton at St Mary's. But it doesn't bother me as we go marching into the Championship, which I think could be tricky as we had the sixth worst budget in League One this season. Over the summer, we have three 100k in the transfer budget and our wage budget has now increased to over a hundred thousand pounds a week so a big summer is needed right here so we've been in the transfer market and as i said this is going to be a big big one for us this time around we haven't actually seen many players leave the club again keeping that core that core social group and that hierarchy really in place because i really do think it makes a huge huge difference we have of course added several players to the squad as you would expect jay kerr is the first one to come in from arsenal again we have to start scouting these new gens we have to find them quicker and better than anybody else and he looks like he could have potential obviously that 16 determination along with the resolute personality really will help him he's got good high teamwork as well we paid 180k to bristol rovers for jed ward he looks like a good option as well to fight it out with the new gen that we uh not new gen the free transfer that we signed in january last season in plogman we've also got this guy robin martindale he looks like the star of the show he comes in with a five star potential ability let me pop him out fully he comes in on loan from liverpool again another liverpool prospect he looks very good 14 crossing good first touch high high technique as well good balance good flair i think he could be pretty solid for us this year uh, let's see how he does develop obviously with the full season at south shields we've also spent a couple uh, a couple of hundred k on a couple of players as well charlie sayers comes in for i think that was what 230k yes from doncaster a little bit more maturity you can't win everything with these kind of kind of kids uh trey noyoni is another one who comes in but yeah we've got some really good players here uh jamie nightingale again not really at the level but again you need to kind of find these sorts of players but we've kept the core of the squad here and added some key additions in my mind obviously martindale comes in green in that hole behind the cam uh, in the cam spot i think he can really really do a job here obviously 20 determination on this guy i have no idea how we've been able to pick this man up from liverpool uh but we we, we let it run Smallbone comes in as a very good mature player in this team and i think ultimately we're looking pretty good semi ropey at the back still in terms of those fullback positions obviously only the two stars in sullivan and pool but i'm not getting too carried away by it because i think we obviously do have good balance in this team but attacking wise we are pretty good rosiak looks very very good in this position as a roman playmaker initially was signed to play right back but ultimately can make that step up which i think is really really good to see um, and ty soji continues to score man continues to score goals i don't know how long that's going to run but we're going to see how long we can make it last obviously we do have the carabao cup and the emirates fa cup no efl trophy anymore which is good get those fixtures off the schedule but we do have the championship we're expected to fight bravely against relegation which hopefully we can continue to do but this is a very very stacked championship if we go and have a look Leeds, nottingham forest and sheffield united relegated norwich are still down here as well stoke luton southampton sunderland there are big big teams in here but we are not the worst of them <laughs> colchester got themselves promoted into the championship they are the worst team in the league apparently along with ourselves um but hopefully we can have a little bit of a scrap i'd love a mid-table finish i'm not expecting promotion this season just keep us in the championship and hopefully we can kind of start to build from here <laughs> I 
I think this year was a marginal step up for us too far too early this season, as after winning against Leeds United at home on the opening day of the campaign, we went on to lose four of the next five fixtures as a little bit of a baptism of fire. However, as we transitioned to that championship life, things did start to settle down as we picked up results in our home form being the driving force of the season. For a fourth season in a row, Ty Soji continued to be our top goal scorer in all competitions, netting 14 goals in 40 appearances. I personally think this could be the end of the road for him in this side after being with the club since the National League. Someone who is still here and seemingly loved the step up was Tony Green who split his season between the cam spot and the right wing and contributed 10 goals and 15 assists in all competitions and that has a transfer value of between 6 and 7 million pounds. We had some further movement in the January transfer window with one larger outgoing that funded some extra business for us. We said goodbye to Jared Barthorpe who didn't even play a single game for us but has some nice physicals and five star potential. He left to join Ipswich Town on a huge fee of one and a half million pounds. We used that transfer fee to great effect signing three players to hopefully improve the ability level of the squad. First up was Josh Swanee from Dundee United who arrived for 425k and has fantastic mentals but is lacking just a little bit physically. Next was Nicolay Soa who signed from Port Vale for 750k and personally I cannot believe this Romanian youth international has arrived via Port Vale of all places. His signing is probably why I think Soji has got to the end of the line with us. And finally we welcomed in Mohamed Njoku from Nigerian side Kawara United for 375k and he scored 11 goals in 13 games for us after arriving so I'm looking forward to seeing what he can do with us after a full season. After the transfer window slam shot, we had a great time of things in the league, finishing up the campaign with a nice flurry of results to see us punch well above our weight and finish up in seventh, narrowly missing out on the playoffs by just a single point. Cups wise this season, it wasn't our year as we got banked by Premier League Brentford in the EFL Cup third round and then by Norwich in the FA Cup fourth round. And then something happened that I have never had happen to me in this year's game before and we had a remarkable youth intake with a player who was actually first team ready right out the gate. When I received my intake I was shocked to see a three and a half star current ability left back there by the name of Lee Reven. On further inspection you can see that he is already a starter attribute wise but at five foot nine he definitely isn't a centre back. So he's being trained to be our new left back, but how good does this 15 year old look? That is a line that is only all right to say in Football Manager. So going into season number six, this is our second year in the championship and we had a big, big outgoing this summer. We sold one player for four million quid. Yes, Owen Beck has now gone. He is playing in Saudi, I believe. Yes, he's gone to Saudi Arabia for four million quid. We signed this man on a free transfer a couple seasons ago. He had a League One season with us. He had a championship season with us and he has now gone to Saudi for four million pounds. You cannot right how ridiculous that is there's no transfers that i need to tell you about on this page we've just signed three players uh let's start off with the free one hugo felix a channel favorite if you've seen him before on the channel he is very very good not as good this year as he was last year but he comes in from benfica on a free transfer can play in two three four key positions for us this time around uh looks like a very very good addition we've also signed this guy as well mohammed from um, bristol rovers of all places with a french player coming through 20 bravery on him 16 determination yeah he's lacking a little bit on his heading but he's got good jumping reach could be a very good defensive midfielder for us if we do need to add a player like that in can also play center back can also play center mid so it looks like a good pickup from rovers for 600k and then we signed callum logan on loan from tottenham for the year again not really gonna be outstanding he spent loads of time on loan he say he played a whole season last year in the championship for birmingham was okay i'm hoping he can make a little bit of a step up this time around but those signings look like decent ones for for us and obviously we have extra money coming into the club which is absolutely fantastic to see we go and quick pit without restriction our best 11 this is how we are set up here and it keeps playing it keeps trying to play so in that position but i want him to play as our striker this time around and then i don't know which one is actually going to make the step up in terms of being the central midfielder let's just put Cartwright in there for the time being this is how we're looking and also Reven is not going to play that position so we need to sort out who's going to be our other center back because he at five foot nine 
is not a centre back, but he does look very good, doesn't he? He's still on a youth contract. We're barely paying him. It's absolutely insane. Um, but this is the team going into the season. Again, no massive superstars. And Joku looks fantastic, actually, uh, and was very good for us in last season. He's now got nine caps and two goals for the Nigerian under 20s, which you absolutely love to see picking up players from that part of the world. He, Green, and Felix look like fantastic options behind the uh, striker. And obviously, the lad from Port Vale, we're going to look to see how he gets on. But the good team work the good determination the good agility despite having eight finishing i think he can still go on to have a good time with us if we go into the competition sab of course we have the exact same stuff again the board are expecting us to fight bravely against relegation but if you have a look at the season preview we're predicted to finish in 21st but we've only got title odds of 50 to 1 which i don't think is that bad i think considering how tight the whole division is we've got stockport up in the division as well coventry and bolton have also joined us here but how tight that division is i'd be surprised if we couldn't make it into the uh, into the playoffs this time around i'd like to think that everton having been relegated with some of the players that they've got they've still got calvert lewin they've still got beto i'd like to think they're going to go back up so that's probably one of the automatic spots gone but if we can make it into the playoffs that would be huge let's get to simulating season number six <laughs> This season, Cup success was not on our agenda. We kind of wanted to put in good performances, but ultimately, when you look at the results, you can see that they just weren't a priority for us this time around. In the EFL Cup, we advanced past both Burton and Lincoln before getting knocked out at home by Chelsea. And in the FA Cup, it was a swift exit at the hands of Norwich in the fourth round. However, we were a completely different animal in the championship this time around. We started the season superbly, winning five of our opening six games as a real statement of intent, with us sharing the goals throughout the team. September saw us wobble marginally, only picking up two points from nine on offer, before achieving a 100% win ratio in October to put us in a fantastic position going into the festive period. As you'd expect with this save, we were active in the January transfer market as our new gen winger, Wayne Johnson was snapped up by Fulham. The deal saw the Premier League club pay £10 million for his services, but he will remain at the club on loan for the rest of the season. That influx of cash allowed us to make moves of our own in the window by bringing in additional young talent. First up was young defensive midfielder from Denmark who looks a little bit raw, but has the key mental attributes to develop. He cost us 750k. Next was creative central midfielder Omar Gonzalez from Cruz Azul in Mexico, and he will need some time to settle at the club, but you can't say no to someone with five-star potential for just 950k. And finally, we pulled in young Celtic defender Keith Miller on loan, and he's a player I'd love to add to the team on a permanent basis. January saw us have another 100% win ratio month that then extended into February, making us go 11 games unbeaten to start 2029. We carried that momentum into the final month of the season, which managed to see us top the championship beating Leeds to the title by four points. This marks a monumental season for the club as we will be playing Premier League football for the first time ever after five promotions in six seasons. The Premier League money has hit our transfer budget as we have a total of £27 million in the kitty for the summer window, but my main goal will be keeping hold of some of the talented youngsters that we've already got at the club. So this had to be a big transfer window for us. We had the Premier League money, but I didn't want to go overboard with it if we didn't need to. We're still wheeling and dealing, signing players for small fees, looking at these new gens who are coming through and trying to build our squad around that youth talent. You can see at the bottom of the screen, we've kind of highlighted a couple of the different ones that have come in. Uh, Dave Watson on a free transfer, again, looks like a very, very, very good player. Where was he before? I can't remember. He was at Motherwell before us. Looks like a brilliant player for the level. Uh, Audish as well looks like an option for us at right back. Can also play centre back. Can also play right wing back. Looks very good physically. High positioning, high tackling. Needs a little bit more work on him, but he is only 20 years of age. Capped at under 20 level uh, for England. He come in from 400k from Liverpool. Harry Jepson is there. Another one to play on the left back side. He comes in from Birmingham. Physically, again, looks very good. High leadership and determination 
information on him as well, which is great to see. Then we got the new gen finder out and we got this lad as well. Georgi Angelov, he looks brilliant. High aggression, high dribbling, high determination, agility, balance is all there. Can play on either wing, can play up top through the middle. And he's a Bulgarian international now, ladies and gents. He's 13 caps and two goals for the Bulgarian international team. Cost us 1.5 billion pounds. Patrick Rangel comes in as another option, uh, more in the center of the park. I don't really see him as a defender, as a five foot 11 kind of guy. Looks like a good pickup for us, obviously coming in from Porto. Another five star potential player. You've got a lot, you've got to love the five star potential players in FM, don't you guys? We've got another couple on this, uh, this side, but they are all youth players who aren't really going to break the bank, as you can kind of see these are the types of players we're trying to find. Get in, get on loan, or either flip for money or get them into the team and get them playing. But if we go into the tactic screen and you can take a look at our best 11, we've got it here saved, I believe. Yes, we do. As our first team, you can see the levels that we are kind of currently operating at. Watson coming in is a very important player for us there. Also, we've moved things around. Uh, Felix coming into the advanced playmaker spot, dropping Njoku back into the central midfield spot. Looks like a very good combination. We've got lots of talent. Felix Green, Angelov looks great. Watson we've already touched on. Sayers, we've kind of got good players in every key area of the pitch. I don't know if they're good enough to make the transition to the Premier League, but I guess only time will tell. Speaking of the Premier League, this is our first season in the Prem, so it's going to be a very interesting one. We do have the Carabao and the FA Cup. If we have a look at the Premier League, though, look at the season preview. We are predicted to finish bottom of the league. That is no surprise. But what I am trying to do is use those years in the Prem to kind of up the facilities you can see here the great training facilities we started at eight for the most part remember so we've now got 14 for training facilities we've got great training facilities and a year in the prem is only going to make that better the youth facilities do need some work but we've got 20 for academy coaching and 17 for youth recruitment so you can kind of see why these new gen players aren't coming through if we go on to the board you can also see they are building a brand new stadium yes we are going to get a new stadium to start next season hopefully we can continue to do that in the premier league but we're improving things on the field and off the field which you absolutely love to see in fm our main goal of this season though was survival in the premier league by any means possible we opened our Premier League campaign with a 2-0 win against Wolves at home before being brought back into our place by Leicester in the second game of the season. I knew we'd face some heavy losses this campaign, but we needed to make sure we were a force at home and that continued to be the case as we powered through the season. We managed to secure valuable wins at home against the likes of Bournemouth, Sunderland and Fulham to keep the points total ticking over going into the festive period. However, it was clear that we needed to strengthen in the January transfer window and we we did just that by splashing a bit of that leftover cash. First up was young English midfielder Prince Sekier from Southampton for £8 million. He never played in the Premier League until signing for us and I think he has a lot of attributes to get excited about. Second was Marco Rosselli, who we picked up from Empoli for £4.7 million. There's also a lot to like about this defender. Not only is he massive at six foot four, he also has 16 acceleration and will be a key part of this defence moving forward. From January onwards, we saw an upturn in fortunes and even managed to turn some of those early season losses on the road into draws and those points started racking up. We even managed to beat Arsenal and Spurs at home with 4-2 and 3-1 wins respectively, which are huge huge, massive, monumental results for Shields in their first season in the Prem. We punched well above our weight this season, achieving a 13th place finish after adjusting to Premier League life very, very well. Nicolai Soa was our main man in front of goal this season, netting 14 goals in the Premier League, which is a massive for a debut season, and he is now valued at over £10 million and is wanted by Sporting over in Portugal. Whilst this season wasn't about the domestic cups, we did have respectable performances in both this season. In the EFL Cup, we knocked out Nottingham Forest, Brighton and Leighton Orient before suffering defeat to Chelsea for a second season in a row in this competition, this time at the quarterfinal stage. And in the FA Cup, we also made it to the quarterfinals after beating Watford, Ipswich and even Manchester United on penalties after a 0-0 draw. But the quarters was a step too far for us this season, taking a 6-1 hammering at home from still championship side Everton. 
This was a huge season for us by even staying in the Premier League, but we cannot rest on our laurels. And the board have gone in two-footed with our transfer budget for season eight, as they've given us a £53 million budget to spend on new talent over the summer. So there's still no major real outgoings. We're not actually selling players for an abundance of cash now we're in the Premier League, but we are trying to invest our money wisely and bring in some really, really good players. First of which is Jorge Gonzalez, who comes in from Bayer Leverkusen for £8 million. Looks like an incredible fullback on this right-hand side. Good concentration, bravery, and determination, as well as good stamina as well. He's six foot two, has really good jumping reach, which is fantastic to have as a fullback. It's not necessarily something I look for, but he's got five-star potential. He's been capped by Spain at under 21 level and looks like a very, very shrewd investment coming in this time around. We've also signed this man on a free transfer, Brian Ott. Althoff, he is going to go back out on loan for first team football coming through RB Leipzig. But this is the guy I'm most excited about. Joel Hoyt coming in. He's a former, where's he played? West Ham, Luton and Hull City. Did he come through Luton's academy? No, he came through West Ham's academy. Right, okay, cool. Former Hammer, uh, Joel Hoyt coming in. He looks like a true box-to-box -box midfielder for me. 16 stamina, good bravery, good positioning, good tackling. It says he's a defensive midfielder. He's not going to be. He's going to play in, he's going to be playing in central midfield for us. He is now valued at 27 to 30 million pounds. He looks brilliant. He's been capped by England at under 21 level. He's now 22 years of age. I think he may struggle to get into the first team for England, but he's going to be a star for us. And then the final player is this guy, uh, Sega. Sega Faye, he come in for basically nothing, guys. Nothing. He's gone uh, for 46k and then he's gone out back on loan into Senegal uh, for the remainder of the season. But looks like an interesting prospect. If he give, gets given game time and is able to develop, you never know where players like this are going to come. Uh, so the fact that he's come in for 46k is a good pickup in my mind. If we go into the tactic screen and we quick pick with uh, the manage there, we've also got our properties set up. This is how we're going to set up this season. Green, Sekir comes in and Joku Watson. We've got really, really good options. And I know Hoyt is not in there right now. Where is he? Where is he? Where is he? Hoyt. I would love to see Hoyt play in that position. Um, so you can see we've got a very good team. Three star, two and a half star, three star ability throughout the whole whole team we don't have superstars but everyone is at this very same level which i actually think is quite good balance wise we're not blowing things out of proportion with our wage budget but if we go over here you can see the number of five star potential players that we do have which is great to see uh, or even is also progressing quite nicely because i'm sure people will want to keep seeing how he's getting on still doing very well still at the club he's now a natural at wing back which is great to see uh, hopefully he continues to go from strength to strength with us this time around obviously See if we go into the competitions tab you can see carabao cup emirates fa cup and the premier league if we go into the premier league i believe we are still the worst team in the league yep a thousand to one to win the title but this could be a very interesting season for us because we do have the Robert Briggs Arena, which we will be opening in the Premier League this time around. So it's going to be very good to see this stadium in action under soil heating, just over 15 and a half thousand capacity. We're going to try and improve that as much as we can because we go into here. You can see we're trying to see if we can get it. It's pending on expanding the stadium right now, but you can see all the requests going in to improve this club as much as we possibly can during the course of this season. Let's get into this season and see if we have another good year in the Prem. I touched on it before, but before we kick off the season, I have to say that we now have our new stadium as the Robert Briggs Arena finally opened. Briggs is actually a current South Shield player and sits second in the club's all-time appearances list, so it seems like a decent one to name the stadium after. And on that pitch for the second season in a row, our main goal was staying in the Premier League, and we got off to a solid, if unspectacular, start, going unbeaten in our opening five games before getting thumped by Man City at home. Our home form remained solid this campaign, but we really started picking up points on the road, including away wins at the likes of Fulham, Brentford and Crystal Palace. 
As always, we made some transfer moves as we signed new gen goalkeeper Jean Polo from America de Cali for just £1 million in January to become our new number one. Next through the door was a channel favourite and the man on the thumbnail, Sevi Helseth Nipan, who arrived from Spurs for £17.5 million after barely playing for them over the past five seasons. And finally, we signed John Shepard from West Ham for six million quid to bolster our options in the centre of the park. Those additions really took us from strength to strength and added key depth options that we were massively missing. That allowed us to push on this season and even beat the likes of Arsenal and Liverpool at the new Robert Briggs Arena. We managed an impressive 58 points this season, improving on last season's 13th place finish to break into the Premier League's top 10 for the first time. There's still plenty of work to do considering we have a negative goal difference, but we have all also made strides forward in the domestic cups as well. In the EFL Cup, we made it to the quarterfinal stage for a second season in a row, defeating Wolves, Bradford and Crystal Palace on the way, but we couldn't get over that hump, suffering a 2-1 defeat at Villa Park thanks to a goal in the 94th minute from Rory Wilson. But this season did see our best performance in the FA Cup as we even made it all the way to Wembley. On our route, we dispatched Middlesbrough, Southend, Sheffield United and then Chelsea in the quarterfinals before taking on our Arsenal in the semis. This was a cagey affair but we weren't really ready for this kind of moment on the big stage as we failed to put in a performance I know we are capable of, losing 2-0 on the day. But a top 10 finish and a cup quarter and semi-finals respectively shows how incredible this journey has been over the 8 seasons so far. We have a great young core in place in this squad right now and the board have been generous enough to give me £55 million to try and crack into those European places. So we splashed the cash this summer. We spent over 40 million bringing in four players to really hopefully allow us to push into those European spots. I'd love to get into Europe with this team at some point during this save. We've got Nahu Garcia as one of the players who came in from Talleres in Argentina. Yeah, in Argentina for five million pounds. He came in towards the end of last season. He's labeled as a wonder kid in terms of that media description. High agility, high stamina, good determination, flair, bravery, 16 dribbling, 16 technique. I think this guy is going to be an absolute superstar at some point. We've also spent more money on some of these other players. This guy's come in. Kim jong Hoon has come in from Liverpool. They've already picked him up from Korea, or South Korea, should I say, for £1.6 million. And we've gone, yep, we'll have a bit of him. £13.5 million. Those physicals are basically why you sign this guy, right? 17s for acceleration, agility, and balance, along with 16 crossing and 15 dribbling. And I think he can be a real threat. He is five foot three. He is a wonder kid. So we're going to have to see how he can develop with some actual game time. Georges Perez has come in from Nacional in Uruguay. He looks fantastic to be in our new cam spot. 17s for agility and first touch. 16s for passing, technique and vision. He's going to be able to unlock defences. He's both footed. He's got full international caps for Uruguay. Age just 19. He's another wonder kid to come into the team. And I'm very happy with him. And finally, we picked up Samuel Effion. He comes in from Vitoria in Portugal. Portugal, I believe. Memory, Steve, I'm really bad today. Yeah, Portugal, there you go. 23 and a half million pounds. He's just missed out on the Nigeria squad. 21 caps for Nigeria internationally. Physically looks fantastic, all in double digits. Mentally fantastic, all in double digits. And look at this combo here. This quartet of our, our attributes, decisions, determination, flair, leadership. Mwah. Very, very good as our central midfielder for us. He looks fantastic six foot as well so it's a nice big body to go in there if we go and have a look at our team if we manage our first team selections this is how we are set up for the year and we're starting to turn things up a notch now the young players that we've had they are developing into their positions and we've also started to bring in some of these other talented players Perez looks great Effiong looks fantastic as well Effiong alongside Nipan in this in this position. Garcia, Perez and Felix looks like a great combo. I'm really excited to see how we can get on this season. Obviously, competitions-wise, we have the exact same stuff. If we go into the Prem, we are no longer the worst team in the Premier League. It's obvious that the impact that we are having on this team is starting to move us in the right direction. We are now 500-1 to one to win the Prem, but we are predicted to finish above Norwich, Sunderland and Derby County. Derby are back in the Prem. Are they going to have another shocking season like they did all those years ago? Let's see what happens in season number nine.
This year, we couldn't live up to last season's domestic cup success, suffering defeat in the EFL Cup to Leeds United in the third round and losing to Hull in the FA Cup in the fifth round. But we did make some significant strides forward in the league. As you can tell from looking at the fixture list, there is more green results and three points in here than in previous campaigns, even if we did suffer some larger defeats against the likes of Manchester City and Arsenal. This season, it felt like we either won games or lost games really gunning for all three points. Key man for us in the league was former Benfica man Hugo Felix. Now 28 years of age, Felix has scored 16 goals and provided 17 assists in the Premier League in his best season since arriving to the club four years ago. He's now valued at over £50 million and has Sevilla and Al Ali sniffing around for his services. And at that price, I'd happily let him go. Moving into 2032, we had our best consecutive run of fixtures since arriving in the Premier League, going unbeaten for a seven-game stretch that included six wins. However, the downside of that was taking on some of the league's better teams to close out the season, but the home form stood strong for the most part, even defeating Manchester United in the penultimate home game of the season. This year, we had our best season ever in the Premier League and finally creeped into those European places, securing a top-six finish and the Europa League qualification for next season. It was our first year with a positive goal difference in the Prem, but I still feel like this team has a little bit more to give. We have just over £40 million to pump into the playing squad to make a difference in our 10th and final season. One thing I have to draw attention to is the massive upgrade in the club's facilities since the start, as we've now managed to almost max out everything, so this club is in fantastic shape moving forward. So first up, I have to say goodbye to a long-time servant at the club who's probably not at that level anymore. Tony Green has left the club, the former Liverpool man. He was with us for seven seasons, all the way from League One up into the Premier League. He's had three seasons in the Prem, and he has now been sold to Real Zaragoza for £6.5 million. Pounds. A good player, but unfortunately just not at the level that we need him to be going into this season we have gone and spent some more cash though guys we've got a couple of players here lots of them are young as you kind of will see Balen likes to find his new gens and those wonder kids so you can see why it's very very good for him to pick up some of these players Sergio Alaban comes in for 1.4 million pounds we've got this guy uh Gudita uh for six million pounds coming in from Napoli he's just a physical specimen he's got 19 agility 16 pace 16 acceleration so with a little bit of nurturing could be a real danger Giorgio Lazzarini comes in as a young option for us at the back again one cap for Germany you can see the sorts of players that he looks for these are wonder kid level talents that we are picking up here and then finally David Rojas comes in from Costa Rica yeah Costa Rican international 14 caps three goals you absolutely love to see these talents 20 determination wow another wonder kid coming into the club you can see what we like at this stage of the game if we quick pick without restriction our first team this is how we are set up for the season lots of familiar faces in here now hugo felix still at the club uh, but we're looking really really good going into this season number 10 we are minor minorly maybe a little bit light at center back but i think we will be okay for the most part now competitions wise you're gonna see the champions league on here yes i can't believe we've qualified for the Champions League either. I thought it was going to be the Europa League, but if I have a look at last season for a second, let me expand that to stages. Last season, look at all the coefficient places England are getting. It's absolutely stupid. Absolutely stupid. So we've got Man City, Chelsea, Newcastle, Arsenal, Liverpool, and ourselves, the top six, all go into the Champions League. And we've also got Brighton, Man United, and Bournemouth in the Europa League as well. The coefficient in the year 2032 is redonkulous. Serie A is now back to being the second best league in Europe, which is absolutely crazy. And the past winners of the Premier League, barring Arsenal winning it once, it's all Man City. And they've got off to an absolute flyer pumping Palace 5 0 on the opening day of this season the team's looking good i'm really excited to see how we do get on obviously if we go into the premier league now we're predicted to finish in 14th we get a run out in the champions league laminia mao and jude bellingham are at man city what could go wrong in season number 10 
Guys, if you are still here watching this video, it's going to be well over an hour at this point. I, I cannot stress how much I really appreciate your support. South Shields, this has been a massive rebuild. I also need to give a massive thank you to Balen for letting us use this save yet again. But I want you to comment the word Shields down below. South Shields, just comment Shields down below to let me know that you are still here 10 seasons into this video i honestly cannot appreciate you guys enough for being here at this point the first trophy up for grabs for us this season was the efl cup and we had our best performance in that competition so far having not got past the quarterfinals before we made it all the way into the semi-finals where we took on leicester city over two legs we were on the road for the first leg of the tie and we caught leicester cold in this one with george perez netting an early goal in the first half then in the second half we turned it on with nicolas soar bagging an impressive race to give us a 3-0 aggregate lead. At home for the second leg, Leicester battled back into the tie with two goals, which then sparked us back into action. Darren Christian and Georges Perez then put the tie beyond doubt with a goal apiece inside the final 10 minutes to see us move into the final. Here we take on the final boss in Manchester City at Wembley. But yet again, in a big game, we failed to deliver on that big stage, losing the game 1-0 to an Erling Haaland penalty. And in the FA Cup, we also had our best performance of this video as well. We defeated Forest Green, Chelsea and Wolves to set up a quarter-final with Bromley. Naturally, the League 2 side couldn't hang with us here as we ran out comfortable 3-0 winners. This sets up a second semi-final in a row where we would take on Leicester City and again we'd come out on top, but this time in style securing a 4-0 victory at Wembley, even with youngster Lee Reaven getting on the score sheet. However, this time it was an easier final as we would take on Sunderland, who finished 12th in the Premier League this season. And this time we were ready for the big stage as we opened the scoring early through Soala. The Black Cats did manage to equalise on the day, but this time we clicked through the gears, adding two second half goals to see us lift the 2033 FA Cup. As you can see, we've really turned the corner and emerged as one of the better teams in the country, and you could visibly see that in the Premier League. We were much more consistent this season, picking up three points on more occasions than not. We even managed to get three points on the road at Man City and Spurs in the first half of the season. In the league, Nicolai Sora was our top goalscorer with 14 goals, but we also had Nahul Garcia have his best return in a Shield shirt, providing 10 goals and 12 assists in 29 Premier League appearances. After the turn of the year, we picked up another 10 wins in the Prem, including a strong finish to the campaign to see us pick up a top four finish and a second successive season in the Champions League. And speaking of the Champions League, we had an outstanding league phase, winning six of our eight games, which even included a 3-0 win against Real Madrid at home. Those league phase results meant that we secured a third place finish and an automatic pathway into the round of 16. A pretty good season for our first year in the competition. Here we faced Dutch side Feyenoord and we were on the road for the first leg. Now Hul Garcia got us off to a flyer in this one after robbing the ball from the opposition before drilling a low shot past the keeper. The Dutch side then did manage to pull a goal back and make things all square and that is how the game in Rotterdam finished. However, back home it was a completely different story as we battered Feyenoord, putting seven goals past them in total in a 7-2 win to see us win the tie 8-3 on aggregate and move into the quarterfinals. We were drawn alongside Liga team Nice and we'd have to travel to the south of France for the first leg. There was a nice slice of misfortune here as we took the lead through an own goal but Nice showed they are no pushovers by scoring two goals of their own in the second half and winning the game 2 one on the night but i thought that we'd still be able to win the game back in the northeast of england oh how wrong i was nice scored a goal either side of halftime to really put us on the back foot nicolas soa did manage to score a goal for us with eight minutes of the game remaining but it was too little too late and we lost the tie 4-2 on aggregate but you can't be disappointed with a top four finish an fa cup and a champions league quarter final inside 10 seasons from a team from English football sixth tier. You can continue this journey if you wanted with this team full of all these wonder kids because Balen has been so kind to give me these save files. They are going to be over on my Patreon now. I also have to give a massive thank you to Balen himself for letting me use these for a video. It's been a remarkable save. You should be very proud of the work that you have done. And if you do like the rebuild content on the channel, guys, check out this playlist. It's all the rebuilds that we've done on this year's game.